a few things here, so I hope I'm um, connecting this together. But what we know is of all of these arrests, that it has not, uh, since the war on drugs, that it's also been spoken about the statistics and how many more people that we've been arresting since the war on drugs. But it has not accomplished anything. It hasn't ended drug usage. It hasn't un ended drug dealing. So whatever you think about the morality or the human consequences of the so-called war on drugs, it doesn't deliver, it doesn't do anything to the people who are still on the street corners or elsewhere selling drugs. Seattle, Seattle. Uh, there's an example in 2006 when the Seattle police spent six months working with the DEA to make undercover stings and hundreds of arrests in the Miller Park and the 21st and Madison area. They devoted extraordinary resources to making drug arrests toward the end of this uh, big sting and all of these arrests and so forth. They had accomplished nothing and a Miller Park neighborhood leader who had been calling for the arrests wrote to the elected officials and said, the drug problem is even worse than before you began. Arrests don't change anything. They don't get to the underlying problems that the people have that are selling or buying drugs on the street. The police even know they can't arrest their way out of this problem. And we as a city need to wake up to that too. So what are we achieving? One by all of these drug arrests, we're increasing the rate of racial disproportionality in our arrests. But we are also filling up all of those beds so that Seattle thinks they have to build a jail. I would like to say that there is something that we can do to change this. There is a model that works with people who are high risk for the drug crime helping them identify goals and do concrete steps to move away from that. And therefore, without, <clears throat> and this was, has been accomplished without arrests, without paying lawyers and judges, and without putting people through jail and the justice system. And what I'm talking about is clean dreams, in which there are peer outreach workers and case managers who work with people who would otherwise be getting arrested for drug activity and help figure out how that they can take help them with their obstacles, whether it be getting a rent, maybe it gets drug treatment, maybe it's vocational training, whatever the obstacle for them to progress in their life to get out of the drug business. The Clean Dreams program started in Rainier Beach where this model has been very successful. It's reached about 100 to 120 individuals. The average age group in this um, uh, study or group that was working there uh, was 25. They averaged three prior felony convictions, most of them, of them drug related. So we're not talking about first time offenders. And what we found was after they were joining in with the Clean Dream peer counselors and getting some goals and work that they had better outcomes for recidivism than the old system of prosecution, conviction, jail, and release, and back out on the streets. The, the results were comparable or better than what was achieved by using the drug court not that the drug court has been a bad thing because it has helped a lot of people, but this program did this for $3,000 per person, including paying for the peer outreach workers. You can imagine what we pay per person to send them into the jail, arrested, pay attorneys, pay judges, pay the system, pay the court uh, monitors, pay everything that goes into that system. We don't need to spend all that money to make change. Um, if we could use this approach in Seattle and in King County, uh, and what I'm saying by this approach, instead of arresting, we do pre-booking 
diversion of low-level drug offenses. We could move 4,000 of Seattle alone uh, arrests out of the King County Jail and into a program like King Clean Dreams. This would be a win-win for everyone. Seattle would save incredible amount of money that they're planning on spending to both build the jail and to maintain it. King County can reduce its criminal justice costs in a sensible way and use that money for social uh, services that right now there are no funds for. Racial disparity in the justice system would improve since drug enforcement patterns are the major cause of racial imbalance in the justice system. Seattle neighborhoods will look and feel safer and hundreds if not thousands of people who have had no choice but to use or sell drugs will have healthier and better options for them. We need to partnership with the Seattle Police Department as they join us as the citizens in community-based, peer-run, and managed diversion programs out of the jail like the Clean, Clean Dreams program and therefore reduce the number of beds that are needed uh, for serious crime and make room for the few people that Seattle needs to arrest. Thank you very much.